Question 1. A 27-year-old woman, after returning home from her honeymoon, has developed urinary frequency, dysuria, and urgency. Her urine is grossly bloody. Which lab data are most likely to define the causal agent? A. A gram-negative diplococcus, which is oxidase positive but does not ferment maltose. B. A gram-positive coccus, which is catalase positive and coagulase negative. C. An optogen resistant, catalase negative, gram-positive coccus. D. A gram-positive bacillus grown on a low oxidation reduction medium. E. A gram-negative bacterium capable of reducing nitrates to nitrites. The correct answer is E. Escherichia coli is the most common cause of cystitis overall and should be assumed to be the cause of any case of cystitis unless contrary culture characteristics are described. It generally reduces nitrates and is also a lactose fermenter. Question 2. Two days after eating a meal that included home canned green beans, three people developed various degrees of visual problems, including double vision and difficulties focusing. Describe the gram reaction of the organism most likely to be isolated from the leftover beans and lab findings which would be used in its identification. A. A gram-positive coccus which is catalase positive and grows in a high salt environment. B. A gram-positive aerobic bacillus which sporulates. C. A gram-positive coccus which is catalase negative and optogen resistant. D. A gram-positive bacillus grown on a low oxidation reduction medium. E. A gram-negative bacillus capable of reducing nitrates to nitrites. The correct answer is D. This case history describes botulism, keywords, home canned. Green beans and visual problems. Foods classically associated are those with a neutral or alkaline pH. C. Botulinum, the agent of botulism, is an anaerobe and thus has a low oxidation reduction requirement. Question 3. A 16-year-old has pneumonia with a dry, hacking cough. The X-ray pattern shows a light, diffuse infiltrative pattern. The most likely organism producing these symptoms is A. A non-gram staining bacterium requiring sterols. B. A bacillus showing granules when staying with methyl and blue. C. A bacitracin sensitive, catalase negative gram positive coccus. D. A coagulase positive, gram positive, catalase positive coccus in clusters. E. A gram positive bacillus grown on a low oxidation reduction medium. The correct answer is A. The disease is most likely mycoplasma pneumonia caused by mycoplasma pneumoniae, which is non gram staining and requires cholesterol for growth. Question 4. A seven-day-old infant presents to the emergency department with a fever, poor feeding, and a bulging fontanelle. During her physical examination, she begins to convulse. A gram stain of the CSF reveals gram-positive rods. Which of the following organisms is the most likely causal agent? A. Escherichia coli. B. Haemophilus influenza. C. Listeria monocytogenes. D. Neisseria meningitidis. E. Streptococcus agalactiae. The correct answer is C. The causal agent is Listeria monocytogenes. The clues are neonatal meningitis, age, gram-positive rods. The only organism in the list that is a gram-positive rod is Listeria. Question 5. A 55-year-old woman had her rheumatic heart valve replaced with a prosthetic valve. Six blood cultures became positive after three days of incubation. An optogen-resistant, catalase-negative gram-positive coccus that was alpha-hemolytic was isolated. What was the most likely causal agent? A. Streptococcus viridens. B. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. C. Serratia marcescens. D. Staphylococcus aureus. E. Streptococcus pneumoniae. The correct answer is A. The agent is viridens streptococcus. The clues are heart valve. Replacement, gram-positive cocci, alpha-hemolytic, and optogen-resistant. Pseudomonas aeruginosa and serratia marcescens. Choices B and C are gram negative rods. Staphylococcus aureus, choice D, is a catalase positive, gram positive coccus. Streptococcus pneumoniae, choice E, is a gram positive. Catalase negative coccus, but it is optogen sensitive. Question 6. A surgical patient develops an abdominal abscess. The abscess was drained, and culture reveals a polymicrobial infection. The predominant organism identified is a gram negative anaerobic rod. Which of the following is the most likely causal agent? A. Bacteroides fragilis. B. Escherichia coli. C. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. D. Staphylococcus aureus. E. Staphylococcus epidermidis. The correct answer is A. The clues are abscess, 
Polymicrobial, gram-negative anaerobe. Bacteroides is the only anaerobe listed. Question 7. A 40-year-old homeless man presents to the emergency department with fever and night sweats, coughing up blood. Acid-fast bacilli are identified in his sputum. Which of the following virulence factors allows the causal agent to inhibit phagosome lysosome fusion to survive intracellularly? A. Cord factor. B. Calcium dipicolinate. C. Peptidoglycan. D. Sulfatides. E. Diberculin. The correct answer is D. The causal agent is Mycobacterium tuberculosis. The clues are coughing up blood, acid, fast bacilli, and homeless. Sulfatides are sulfolipids which hydrolyze to form sulfuric acid. The acidic pH of the M. tuberculosis containing phagosome acts to stop lysosomal fusion. Question 8. A 28 year old woman presents to her gynecologist with complaints of A. Malodorous vaginal discharge. Upon examination, the physician notes a thin, gray vaginal discharge with no vaginal redness. A whiff test was positive for an aminoter. Which of the following is consistent with this case? A. Clue cells. B. Gram negative diplococci and PMNs. C. Coil acidic cells. D. Ally inclusions. E. Zonk smear. The correct answer is A. The causal agent is Gardnerella vaginalis. The clues are malodorous discharge, positive whiff test, thin gray discharge. Gram negative diplococci and PMNs, choice B, is consistent with Neisseria gonorrhea. Coil acidic cells, choice C, is consistent with human papillomavirus. Ally inclusions, choice D, are consistent with cytomegalovirus. Zonk smears, choice E, are diagnostic for herpes simplex virus. Question 9. Several postal workers come down with symptoms of dyspnea, cyanosis, hemoptysis, and chest pain. Chest x-ray reveals mediastinal widening. Sputum cultures are negative for all routine respiratory pathogens. Serology correctly identifies the causal agent. Which of the following structures is possessed by the causal agent? A. Elementary body. B. Endotoxin. C. Periplasmic space. D. Reticulate body. E. Spore. The correct answer is E. The causal agent is Bacillus anthracis. The clues are postal. Workers, hemoptysis and mediastinal widening. Elementary body and reticulate body, choices A and D, are consistent with chlamydia. Endotoxin and paraplasmic space, choices B and C, are consistent with gram-negative bacteria. Question 10. A 25-year-old man gets into a fight at the local bar and punches another patron in the mouth. The following day his fist becomes infected and he visits a local urgent care center. Exudate from the wound is cultured on blood and chocolate agar and reveals gram-negative rods that have a bleach-like odor. Which of the following agents is the most likely cause? A. Actinobacillus actinomycetum comitans. B. Cardiobacterium hominis. C. Iconella carotens. D. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. E. Angela kingi. The correct answer is C. The clues are fist fight wound, gram-negative rods with bleach-like odor. Question 11. A 45-year-old woman presents to the emergency department with intense pain in her lower back and a burning sensation upon urination. A urine culture was taken and plated on McConkey agar. Gram-negative rods that did not ferment lactose were identified. Which virulence factor of the causal agent is most important to pathogenesis? A. Capsule. B. Catalase. C. Coagulase. D. Exotoxin. E. Urease. The correct answer is E. The causal agent is Proteus vulgaris. The clues are lower back. Pain, kidney stones, gram-negative rods, lactose non-fermenter, UTI. Capsules, choice A, are antifagocytic, and Proteus does not have a capsule. Catalase, choice B, is produced by Proteus, but is not a major mechanism of pathogenesis. Coagulase, choice C, is produced by Staphylococcus aureus. Exotoxins, choice D, are secreted toxins. Question 12. A 70-year-old man is hospitalized for an infection and treated with clindamycin. The patient improves and returns to his nursing home. Two weeks later he is rushed to the emergency room with fever and loose, mucoid green stools. The diarrhea is voluminous, and he is having severe abdominal pain. Sigmoidoscopy of his colon reveals yellow-white plaques. What is the single most likely event-slash-factor that contributed to this patient's current illness? A. Administration of antibiotics. B. Advanced age. C. Drinking unpasteurized milk. D. 
eating contaminated cold cuts. E. Living in nursing home. The correct answer is A. The causal agent is Clostridium difficile. The clues are clindamycin, loose, mucoid, stools, yellow plaques. Clindamycin and other broad-spectrum antibiotics are associated with pseudomembranous colitis, as they kill off the normal gut flora and C. difficile flourishes without competition. Question 13. A 15-day-old boy presents with conjunctivitis. Iodine-staining bodies are seen in conjunctival scrapings. The most likely infectious form is a N. A. Elementary body. B. Reticulate body. C. Endospore. D. Exotoxin. E. Vegetative cell. The correct answer is A. The patient has inclusion conjunctivitis caused by chlamydia trachomatis. The only form of this bacterium that has the ability to bind to the membranes and infect is the elementary body. Question 14. A 45-year-old man presents to the emergency department with shortness of breath and a productive cough. His sputum was gelatinous and bloody. Gram stain of the sputum revealed numerous PMNs and gram-negative rods. Which of the following descriptions is most likely to fit the patient? A. Alcoholic. B. Homeless. C. Hiker. D. For drug user. E. Veterinarian. The correct answer is A. The causal agent is Klebsiella pneumoniae. The clues are gelatinous and bloody sputum, PMNs and gram-negative rods identified in the sputum. The most likely patient to present with K. pneumoniae would be elderly with a pre-existing condition, like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or an alcoholic. Question 15. An infant presents with fever, convulsions, and nuchal rigidity during the first month of life. Which of the following agents is the most likely cause? A. Shirukia coli. B. Haemophilus influenza. C. Listeria monocytogenes. D. Streptococcus agalactiae. E. Streptococcus pneumoniae. The correct answer is D. Group B. Streptococcus, GBS, is the most common cause of neonatal meningitis, followed by E. coli. S. pneumoniae is most common in adults. Question 16. A 60-year-old woman is hospitalized following a stroke and develops a high-grade fever with chills. She is catheterized due to urinary incontinence and receives cephalosporin for treatment of pneumonia. Blood cultures and gram stain are performed by the laboratory. The organisms isolated are gram-positive cocci that are catalase negative and capable of growth in 6.5% sodium chloride. Which of the following is the most likely causal agent? A. Enterococcus fecalis. B. Staphylococcus aureus. C. Staphylococcus epidermidis. D. Streptococcus pyogenes. E. Viridin streptococci. The correct answer is A. The clues are elderly, catheter, gram-positive cocci, catalase negative, growth in 6.5% sodium chloride. Staphylococcus aureus and Staphylococcus epidermidis, choices B and C, are catalase positive. Streptococcus pyogenes and Viridin streptococci, choices D and E, would not grow in a high concentration of salt. Question 17. A 35-year-old man who is positive for HIV develops sepsis with the subsequent development of a necrotic lesion on the buttock that has a black center and an erythematous margin. Which of the following is the most likely causal agent? A. Bacillus anthracis. B. Clostridium perfringens. C. Enterococcus fecalis. D. Pseudomonas aeruginosa. E. Staphylococcus aureus. The correct answer is D. The clues are immunosuppressed, HIV+, plus, necrotic lesion with black center and erythematous margin, ectoma gangrenosum. Bacillus anthracis, choice A, is close because a black escar can resemble ectoma gangrenosum, but it usually would appear at the point of contact, probably not on the buttock. Clostridium perfringens, Enterococcus fecalis, and Staphylococcus aureus, choices B, C, and E, do not fit the case description. Question 18. A 15-year-old girl develops a sore throat, fever and earache of approximately one week duration. Upon examination by her physician, an erythematous rash is noted covering most of her body and her tongue appears bright red. Which of the following is the description of the causal agent? A. Gram-positive coccus, alpha-hemolytic, catalase negative. B. Gram-positive coccus, beta-hemolytic, catalase negative. C. Gram-positive coccus, alpha-hemolytic, catalase positive. D. Gram-positive coccus, beta-hemolytic, catalase positive. E. Gram-positive coccus, gamma-hemolytic, catalase negative. The correct answer is B. The causal agent is streptococcus pyogenes, the disease is scarlet fever. 
The clues are sore throat for one week, rash, red tongue, strawberry tongue. Gram positive coccus, alpha hemolytic, catalase negative, choice A, is descriptive of streptococcus pneumoniae. Gram positive coccus, alpha hemolytic, catalase positive, choice C, does not describe an important medical pathogen. Gram positive coccus, beta hemolytic, catalase positive, choice D, is descriptive of Staphylococcus aureus. Gram positive coccus, gamma hemolytic, catalase negative, choice E, is descriptive of some strains of Enterococcus. Question 19. A patient is admitted to the hospital because of a bleeding duodenal ulcer. Culture at 37.0 C, 98.6 F, reveals a ureus positive, gram negative, curved rod. Which of the following is a likely complication due to infection with the causal agent? A. Diarrhea. B. Kidney stones. C. Pseudomembranous colitis. D. Stomach cancer. E. Vomiting. The correct answer is D. The causal agent is Helicobacter pylori. The clues are ulcer, urease positive, gram negative curved rod. It is important to know all organisms that are associated with an increased risk of developing cancer. Question 20. Roommates of a 19-year-old college student become alarmed when he does not get up to go to swim practice in the morning and they are unable to wake him for his 11 a.m. class, he had complained of a headache and not feeling well the night before. The rescue squad finds a febrile, comatose young man with a pedicule rash. In the emergency room, Koenig and Brzezinski signs are present. No papilledema is seen, so a spinal tap is done. Protein is high, glucose low. CSF WBC count is 9,000, mainly PMNs, with few RBCs. The characteristics of the most likely causal agent are A. An enveloped Zna virus. B. A naked, plus rhinovirus. C. A gram-negative bacillus with a polyrobital capsule. D. A gram-negative, oxidase-positive diplococcus. E. A gram-positive, lancet-shaped, alpha-hemolytic diplococcus. The correct answer is D. The most likely causal agent here is a bacterium. Viral meningitis is usually mild and would not fit the CSF values. Both the age of the patient and the pedicule rash suggested is most likely to be Neisseria meningitidis, which is a gram-negative diplococcus that is oxidase positive. The overproduction of outer membrane fragments is what leads to the pedicule rash, even prior to antibiotic treatment. Question 21. What type of genetic material is created by repeated transpositional recombination events? A. Chromosomal drug resistance genes, B. Genetic operon, C. HFR chromosome, D. Insertion sequences, E. Multiple drug resistance plasmids. The correct answer is E. Transposition or transpositional recombination is a form of site-specific recombination and is largely responsible for the creation of multiple drug resistant plasmids. Chromosomal drug resistance may arise by movement of a plasmid gene to the chromosome but it is usually just a solitary gene and not a repetitive event. The HFR chromosome arises through a single site-specific integration of a fertility factor with the bacterial chromosome. Question 22. Which genetic material is found in pathogenic Cornybacterium diphtheriae but not in non-pathogenic normal flora diphtheroids? A. A diphthamide on EF2. B. An episome. C. An F factor. D. An integrated temperate phage. E. Highly repetitive bacterial DNA. The correct answer is D. This question is asking what carries the genetic code for diphtheria toxin, which must be some kind of DNA, which in turn means that the protein EF2 can be immediately eliminated. The diphthamide on EF2 is actually the substrate for the ADP ribosylation done by the diphtheria toxin. Genes expressing the diphtheria toxin originally enter C. diphtheria as part of the DNA of the temperate coronophage. Integration of this temperate phage results in a stable prophage, which directs the production of the diphtheria toxin. Question 23. How is a prophage created? A. Through activation of the Rec A gene product of an exogenote, B. Infection of a bacterial cell with a virulent bacteriophage, C. Through site specific recombination of a temperate phage in bacterial DNA, D. Through infection of a bacterial cell with lambda phage, lacking the lambda repressor, E. Excision of bacterial DNA and active lytic replication of a bacteriophage. The correct answer is C. Site specific recombination of phage DNA into bacterial cell. DNA by the process of lysogeny creates a prophage. The Rec A gene product, choice A, is necessary for homologous recombination with an exogenote but does not create a prophage. A virulent bacteriophage, choice B, causes lysis of the host's cell and not the production of prophage. The lambda phage, 
Choice D, is a temperate phage, which can cause lysogeny of infected cells, but the lambda repressor is necessary in such cases to prevent the lytic life cycle. Choice E might be the pathway a perphage could choose to reinitiate its lytic lifestyle, but it would not be a means to create a perphage. Question 24. If one cell of type 1 is mixed into a culture of 100 cells of type 2, and culture conditions are optimized for conjugation but not for cell division, the cellular genotype that would predominate after overnight incubation would be that of A. Cell number 1. B. Cell number 1 with new A, B, C, and D alleles. C. Cell number 2 with new A, B, C, and D alleles. D. Cell number 1 with a new allele. E. Cell number 2 with a new A allele. F. Cell number 1 with new A and B alleles. G. Cell number 1 with new A and B alleles. The correct answer is E. This hypothetical condition describes the mixing of one HFR cell with 100 F recipients. Over time, with no cell division occurring, the 1HFR cell would repeatedly conjugate with the F cells and transfer one strand of its chromosomal DNA in sequence, beginning with OREAD and theoretically ending with the TRAI genes. The most frequently transferred bacterial genes also have the greatest likelihood of successful recombination, they are those closest to OREAD, in this example, the A allele. The entire chromosome is so large that it is virtually never transferred in its entirety and thus, the TRAI genes would not be transferred. Question 25. Assume the following cells have no plasmids other than those mentioned. Which cell type would contain two molecules of DNA? A, F plus, B, F, C, HFR. The correct answer is A. The F plus cell would contain both the bacterial chromosome and the fertility factor. The other two would just each have the bacterial chromosome, F, or the single DNA molecule of the chromosome with the integrated fertility factor. Question 26. Assume the cells whose genotype is listed have no other plasmids than those indicated by the indicated genotype. Which bacterial cell is most likely to transfer chromosomal genes in linear order? A. F plus. B. F. C. HFR. The correct answer is C. Only F plus and HFR can donate genes to a recipient or F cell. The F plus cell would transfer only plasmid genes. The HFR would be the only one likely to transfer chromosomal genes. Question 27. What bacterial gene transfer process is most sensitive to extracellular nucleuses? A. Conjugation, B. Generalized transduction, C. Homologous recombination, D. Site-specific recombination, E. Specialized transduction, F. Transformation. The correct answer is F. In transformation, free DNA from lysed cells is not protected from the environment either by a cell or by a phage coat but is instead naked and therefore subject to nucleuses. Question 28. Following specialized transduction, if any of the bacterial genes transferred in are to be stabilized, what process must occur? A. Conjugation. B. Generalized transduction. C. Homologous recombination. D. Site-specific recombination. E. Specialized transduction. F. Transformation. The correct answer is C. The DNA is transferred in as a linear piece and must be stabilized by homologous recombination. Question 29. The ability of a cell to bind DNA to its surface and import it is required for which genetic process? A. Conjugation. B. Generalized transduction. C. Homologous recombination. D. Site-specific recombination. E. Specialized transduction. F. Transformation. The correct answer is F. The statement fits the definition of competency required for transformation. Question 30. The process by which bacterial or plasmid DNA may be mistakenly incorporated, during assembly, into one phage being produced by the lytic life cycle and then that DNA transferred to another bacterial cell which may acquire some new genetic traits is called A. Conjugation B. Generalized transduction C. Homologous recombination D. Site-specific recombination E. Specialized transduction. F. Transformation. The correct answer is B. This is generalized transduction, but what are your clues? First, it says one phage rather than all the phage in the cell, as for specialized. Then it also says plasmid DNA could be picked up. For specialized transduction, only episomal plasmid DNA, incorporated into the bacterial chromosome near an attachment site, or chromosomal DNA could be picked up. Finally, it mentions a lytic virus life cycle. Lytic viruses are only capable of generalized transduction. Question 31. 
Recombination is required for stabilization of genetic material newly transferred by all of the following processes except a. Maniva transposon, b. Integration of a temperate bacteriophage, c. Transduction of a chromosomal gene, d. Conjugal transfer of an R factor, e. Transformation of a chromosomal gene. The correct answer is d. Transpositional movement actually involves a type of recombination called transposition that is a form of site specific recombination. Site specific recombination is also involved in integration of a temperate bacteriophage. Both transformation and transduction require homologous recombination as would transfer of HFR DNA by conjugation. But either F factor or R factor DNA circularizes when it enters a new cell and thus is stable without recombination since circular DNA is not subject to cellular exonucleases. Question 32. Lysogenic conversion. A. Is a change in pathogenicity due to the presence of a prophage. B. Is the induction of a prophage to its virulent state. C. Is the conversion of a virulent phage into a temperate phage. D. Refers to the incorporation of a prophage into the chromosome. E. Is the immunity that a prophage confers on a bacterium. The correct answer is A. Choice D is a definition of lysogeny but lysogenic conversion is when lysogeny changes the characteristic of the lysogenized organism. In medicine this usually means an increased pathogenicity from the process. Question 33. Which of the following events is most likely due to bacterial transformation? A. A formerly non-toxigenic strain of Corynebacterium diphtheriae becomes toxigenic. B. A non-encapsulated strain of Streptococcus pneumoniae acquires a gene for capsule formation from the extract of an encapsulated strain. C. A strain of Neisseria gonorrhea starts producing a plasmid-encoded beta-lactamus similar to that another gram-negative strain. D. A gene for gentamicin resistance from an Escherichia coli chromosome appears in the genome of a bacteriophage that has infected it. The correct answer is B. Choice A would require phage infection with a temperate coronophage. Choice C is most likely to take place through a conjugal transfer. Choice D might occur by specialized transduction. Question 34. Which of the following mechanisms is most likely to be involved in multiple drug resistance transfer from one cell to another? A. Specialized transduction of a chromosomal gene for drug resistance. B. Transformation of chromosomal genes. C. Transposition. D. Conjugation with a cell with a free plasmid carrying drug resistance. E. Conjugation with a cell with chromosomal drug resistance. The correct answer is D. Multiple drug resistance is almost always plasmid mediated, which rules out choices A. B, and E transposition is moving a piece of DNA to another molecule of DNA within the cell. Question 35. Which of the following agents, if introduced into a growing culture of bacteria, would halt growth but, if then removed, would allow growth to resume? A, antiseptic. B, bactericide. C, bacteriostat. D, disinfectant. E, sterilizing agent. The correct answer is C. This is the classic description of a bacteriostatic agent. Question 36. A burn patient develops a purulent infection at the site of a skin graft. Culture of the pus is positive for Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The patient is started on anti-pseudomonal penicillin while a Kirby Bauer agar disc diffusion test is requested for the isolate. The results are shown. What is the correct interpretation of these lab results? A. The isolate is most sensitive to antibiotic B. B. The isolate is most sensitive to antibiotic C. C. The isolate is most sensitive to antibiotic E. D. The isolate is resistant to antibiotic B. E. Results cannot be analyzed without a key. The correct answer is E. The Kirby Bauer agar disc diffusion test is a means to compare the functions of several antibiotics against one bacterial isolate. In a general sense, bacteria will be inhibited from growing in close proximity to any disc of antibiotic to which they are sensitive, so the larger the zone of inhibited growth around the filter paper disc, the more sensitive the bacteria are to that drug. Comparison between the discs cannot be accomplished without the key which comes with the kit, however, since the company which prepared the kit has done the clinical trials which correlate the in vitro results with those in human patients. Question 37. A bacterial isolate from a patient with chronic sinusitis is shown to be sensitive to amoxicillin on a Kirby Bauer agar disc diffusion test. A follow up determination of the mic of the drug is reported back from the laboratory at 2 microgram slash ml with an MBC of 1 microgram slash ml. What is the correct interpretation of this data? A. The drug is bactericidal. B. The drug is bacteriostatic. C. The drug should be administered to the patient at 1 microgram slash ml. 
D. The drug should be administered to the patient at 2 micrograms slash ml. E. There has been a laboratory error. The correct answer is E. The mic, minimal inhibitory concentration, is the most dilute amount of drug in which no growth of a bacterial isolate will occur. The MBC, minimal bactericidal concentration, of a drug is the most dilute amount of a drug in which there will be no colonial growth after the drug is removed. In some cases the MBC may be equal to the mic, but the amount of drug necessary to kill all bacteria is never less than the amount required to inhibit their growth temporarily. Question 38. A 5-year-old girl presents to the pediatrician with complaints of a sore throat. Her mother also noticed that both of her eyes were slightly red. Examination reveals rhinopharyngitis with bilateral conjunctivitis. What activity likely led to the illness? A. Hiking in a heavily wooded area. B. Eating undercooked shellfish. C. Playing with toys in a daycare center. D. Traveling to a developing country. E. Swimming in a community pool. The correct answer is E. The disease is viral pharyngoconjunctivitis, caused by adenovirus, which is very commonly contracted through swimming pools. Adenovirus is a naked virus and chlorination of pools does not inactivate it. Hiking in a heavily wooded area, choice A, could be associated with a vector-borne disease, such as Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Eating undercooked shellfish, choice B, could be associated with hepatitis A or Vibrio parahemolyticus, for example. Playing with toys in a daycare center, choice C, and traveling to a developing country, choice D, both could begin the infection of a long list of agents. Question 39. Serologic test results from a hepatitis patient reveal, anti-HBC positive, HBS AG positive, and anti-HBs negative. The correct interpretation of the patient's status is. A. No longer contagious. B. Immune to hepatitis B virus. C. Evidence of receiving hepatitis B vaccination. D. Hepatitis B virus chronic carrier state. E. Impossible to have both surface antigen and core antibody positive. The correct answer is D. The presence of hepatitis B surface antigen in the absence of the surface antibody, anti-HBs, indicate either an acute HBV infection, if patient has had the disease for only a short time, or a chronic carrier state, if the hepatitis has been going on for at least six months. Question 40. A six-year-old girl presents to the emergency department with a fever and a lacy body rash. Her mother says that yesterday the rash was only on her face, but by this morning, had spread to her trunk and extremities. Which of the following agents is most likely? A. B19. B. HHV6. C. Measles. D. Rubella. E. Varicella zoster virus. The correct answer is A. The clues are lacy body rash preceded by a facial rash in a school. Age child with fever. HHV6, choice B, is the causal agent of rosella, which is fever, followed by a lacy body rash in infants. Measles, choice C, is identified by cough, coryza, and conjunctivitis with photophobia, coplic spots, and an exanthematous rash beginning below the ears then spreading to the trunk and extremities. Rubella, choice D, is the causal agent of German measles, which involves a rash beginning at the forehead and spreading down. Question 41. The best prospects for treatment and cure of microbial diseases are always those unique factors of a pathogen's life cycle that can be altered without affecting the survival of the host's own cells. In HIV, one such therapeutic target would be the products of the Paul gene, which codes for the reverse transcriptase unique to the retroviral life cycle. If it were possible to ablate expression of the HIV Paul gene, what other aspect of the virus's life cycle would be directly altered? A. Transcription from proviral DNA B, production of viral mRNA C, integration of proviral DNA D, nucleocapsid. E. Viral maturation. The correct answer is C. The Paul gene codes for reverse transcriptase, integrase, and protease. Reverse transcriptase creates the provirus and integrase allows the proviral DNA to be integrated, apparently at a random site, into a chromosome in the host cell. Of the distractors, both choices A and B are accomplished using the host cell's RNA polymerase. Choice D is a function of the GAG gene, and choice E is controlled by TAD and REV genes. Question 42. A 28-year-old male ER resident was accidentally stuck with a needle from a hepatitis B virus positive patient. He was too embarrassed to tell his attending of his mistake. Two months later, he began to feel fatigued and lost his appetite. When he ordered a hepatitis B serologic panel, he received the results as follows. HBS AG plus. 
HBS AB minus, HBC AB plus, HAG plus, HAB minus. What is the status of the resident? A. Acute infection. B. Chronic infection. C. Fulminant infection. D. Immune. E. Uninfected. The correct answer is A. The presence of HBS AG, HBC AB, and HAB AG are all indicators of an acute infection at two months post exposure. It is too early to identify a chronic infection, choice B, but the presence of HBS AG after six months is the main indication of a chronic infection. With a fulminant infection, choice C, the patient's symptoms are usually much more serious, likely a super infection with hepatitis D or the Delta agent. If he were immune, choice D, he would have had HBS AB in his serum. Since he has hepatitis B viral antigens in his blood, choice E is wrong. Question 43. A prison inmate who was diagnosed with hepatitis six months ago is tested for his progress with the following results, HBS AG minus HBS AB plus HBC AB plus AB AG minus AB AB plus what is the status of the patient? A. Acute infection. B. Chronic infection. C. Fulminant infection. D. Immune. E. Uninfected. The correct answer is D. The inmate is immune as he has a complete complement of antiviral antibodies. Question 44. A 10-year-old boy is brought to the emergency department with a high fever, chills, headache, and nausea. He vomits at admission, where his temperature is 40.1 C, 104.2 F, and he begins to hallucinate. A CT scan reveals encephalitis in one temporal lobe. Which of the following causal agents is most likely? A. California encephalitis. B. Herpes simplex virus 1. C. Polio virus. D. St. Louis encephalitis. E. West Nile virus. The correct answer is B. This patient has herpes simplex encephalitis, which typically affects the temporal lobes. California encephalitis, choice A, affects older children in the middle and northwestern U.S. The polio virus, choice C, causes a flaccid paralysis with no sensory loss, and does not occur in the United States. St. Louis encephalitis, choice D, and the West Nile virus, choice E, usually affect older individuals. Question 45. A 60-year-old woman who recently received a liver transplant develops a high fever and severe dyspnea with a dry hacking cough. Chest x-ray reveals bilateral interstitial infiltrates that are diffuse. Which of the following agents is most likely responsible for her condition? A. Adenovirus. B. Cytomegalovirus. C. Influenza virus. D. Respiratory syncytial virus. E. Rhinovirus. The correct answer is B. The clues are transplant patient with interstitial pneumonia, CMV, is the most common cause. Adenovirus, choice A, is associated with conjunctivitis and acute respiratory disease in military recruits, among other diseases. Although influenza, choice C, can cause pneumonia, there is no mention of season and CMV is still the most common cause in transplant patients. Respiratory syncytial virus, choice D, is usually seen in children, especially premature infants, and rhinovirus, choice E, causes the common cold. Question 46. An 8-year-old boy from India was brought to the emergency department while visiting the U.S. because of a flaccid paralysis in his lower extremities. His mother explains that the child had a flu-like illness a couple of weeks earlier. How was the agent in the case likely acquired? A. Fecal oral. B. Mosquito. C. Respiratory. D. Sexual. E. Tick. The correct answer is A. Polio is caused by the poliovirus. The clues are flaccid paralysis and India, and polio is transmitted by the fecal oral route. Question 47. A 5 year old girl presents with a fever and generalized macular rash that is most dense on the scalp and trunk of the body. Several waves of lesions appear, one after another and evolve rapidly into vesicles and then pustules over several days. The most likely disease and causal agent is A. Xanthem sebitum due to cytomegalovirus. B. Chickenpox due to the varicella zoster virus. C. Whitlow infection due to herpes simplex virus type 1. D. Herpetic gingivostomatitis due to the varicella zoster virus. E. Infectious mononucleosis due to the Epstein-Barr virus. The correct answer is B. The clinical presentation is consistent with chickenpox caused by VZV. Exanthem sebitum is caused by human herpes virus 6, not by CMV. Herpetic gingivostomatitis refers to herpes simplex type 1, not VZV. 
Infectious mononucleosis is a lymphadenopathy and herpetic whitlow is a painful herpes infection of the nail bed. Question 48. Infection of appropriate cells with a composite virus made up of Coxsackie virus capsid components and poliovirus RNA would yield progeny which would a. Have the host cell range of Coxsackie virus. b. Also be composite viruses. c. Show phenotypic mixing. d. Have a recombinant genome consisting of both Coxsackie and poliovirus. e. React with Sabine vaccine-induced antibodies. The correct answer is e. The only nucleic acid in the composite parental virus is the RNA belonging to poliovirus. Thus, only poliovirus is made. The only role the Coxsackie virus would play in the infection is to bind to the host cell and stimulate the uptake of the composite virus. Once uncoating takes place, the Coxsackie components play no further role. A perfect poliovirus will have been made. Question 49. An epidemic of nausea, vomiting, and watery diarrhea breaks out on shipboard during a cruise to the Virgin Islands. Which of the following accurately describes the most likely causal agent? A. Acid fasto assists. B. Enveloped DNA virus. C. Enveloped RNA virus. D. Non-enveloped DNA virus. E. Non-enveloped RNA virus. The correct answer is E. A common cause of gastroenteritis on cruise ships is the norovirus. Norovirus is a member of the Calisiviridae family and is a non-enveloped RNA virus. Acid fasto assists, choice A, refer to persistent diarrhea caused by cryptosporidium parvum or isospora belli, usually seen in AIDS patients. Question 50. To design a vaccine against HIV infection, a logical goal would be to alter some native molecule or product of the virion in order to make it highly immunogenic. If you wish to prevent the attachment of the virus to helper T lymphocytes, which molecule or family of molecules might best be targeted? A. GP41. B. GP120. C. Nucleocapsid protein. D. P17. E. P24. The correct answer is B. GP120 is the surface antigen of HIV that mediates its attachment to CD4 lymphocytes. GP41 is a transmembrane glycoprotein, and P24, P17, and nucleocapsid protein are all internal molecules, which would rarely be accessible to the immune response. 